Hi guys, it's Michelle here, and I'm going to be telling you a bit about the ocean and about these cool things called Argo floats. How the heck do oceanographers know exactly what's going on in the ocean anyway? Well, they start off with a couple of really important measurements, temperature and salinity. Here's a cool 3D plot from the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory in Seattle showing how temperature can vary in the ocean. Temperature and salinity data are sort of the bread and butter of oceanographic modeling. Right now, oceanographers are asking a lot of big questions, like how does the ocean interact with the Earth's atmosphere? How much carbon dioxide can the ocean absorb? How do ocean currents impact climate change? One way to get temperature or salinity data is to go out on a ship and measure it directly. You could lower special instruments deep into the ocean to take measurements at different depths. The ship can sail across the ocean in straight lines, stopping every so often to take measurements. There's a bit of a problem, though. Research ships cost a lot of money. It's not unusual for operating costs for research ships to be in the tens of thousands of dollars per day. Luckily for oceanographers everywhere, ship-based measurements are not the only way to go. For example, you could get your measurements from moorings, where the instruments are attached to a wire and anchored so they stay in place. These instruments can take measurements at a single location for a very long time. You can also use satellites to take measurements remotely. Satellites measure radiation from the sea surface, and those measurements can be used to estimate temperature and salinity. But you don't want to hear about that stuff. You're here to learn about Argo floats. A while back, I chatted with Rick Rupan, who's the lab manager for the Argo float program at the University of Washington. I was talking to Rick so that he could give me all the details on how these super cool instruments work. And he would know. Rick and his team design, build, and deploy 95 to 100 floats every year. Rick explained to me that each float is programmed with instructions telling it where to go. A typical Argo float is programmed with a 10-day cycle that repeats over and over and over. The first thing the Argo float does is drop down in the water column to a depth of a thousand meters. It chills out there, just drifting, for about nine days. Then it's time to get to work. The float sinks down to 2,000 meters and then rises to the surface over the course of a few hours, collecting temperature and salinity data along its ascent. Once it's at the surface, it communicates with a satellite to send the most recent profile back to data centers on land. At this point, you're probably wondering how the floats move up and down in the water column. It all really boils down to changes in buoyancy. Basically, buoyancy describes whether a solid object will sink or float when it's in a fluid. If it's denser than the fluid, it will sink. And if it's less dense, it'll float. Rick explains that density depends on two things, the mass of the object and the volume. The relationship looks like this. The density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. This equation tells us that if the mass increases, the density will also increase. On the other hand, if the volume increases, since it's down here in the denominator, the density will decrease. Got that? Okay. But hang on. We can't change the mass of the Argo float. So that leaves the volume. Let's say the float needs to rise to the surface. That means we need to increase the volume so we can decrease the overall density. When the float needs to increase its volume, it pumps oil from inside the body of the float to an external bladder. It's the same mass, just taking up more space. And up it goes. The opposite happens when the float needs to sink. The oil from the bladder is sucked back into the float body and it sinks down. Thousands of Argo floats are out there right now, each measuring one 2,000 meter profile every 10 days. It's an oceanographer's dream. Well, that pretty much sums it up. Thanks so much for watching.
I'd like to say a special thank you to all the folks who helped me out with this video. You guys are the best.